Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 429, Anti-Aging and Peptides. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. So last week we had a conversation about peptides. We'd gone to a national conference of anti-aging specialists, which is something that Dr. Maupin or people from her office do two or three times a year because they want to stay current on the best treatment protocols, the best research, and the best medicines that are out there. So as we discussed what peptides are, how they work in your body, their amino acid chains that your body naturally makes, but again, like hormones, which your body naturally makes, as you age, the ability of your body to make what you need in sufficient quantity and uh, proper order diminishes. And medicine has learned anti-aging specialists have learned how to replace those things that are diminishing, such as your hormones, which is the primary focus of Dr. Maupin's practice. But she is now learning and is beginning to incorporate in that practice supplemental things that go with the hormones that can help, called peptides. And there are 700 peptides that we've discovered so far. They're still researching. There are Most of those are just numbers on a code list. They, they don't even have a name. But some of them they have named and they have now produced and recommend for certain conditions or issues that you may be going through as you age. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So one of the the, um, findings that I've had as I've done the the last um, 18 years of biobalance health and and replacing hormones with pellets, uh, long-acting, bioidentical hormones, estrogen and testosterone for women and testosterone for men, is that most people get completely re- reversed. They get better. They feel better. They, their illnesses are, are less, they either are less obvious, they take less drug uh, for that medicine, or, I mean, for that disease, and they also have a better quality of life. A few people don't. And I've always wondered, what was that? Yeah, what's unique about this individual? Because a lot of people that come to you, an average, manage to come off of three to four Mm -hmm. other medicines that they've been put on by other doctors to treat symptoms that come with aging. And the hormone replacement satisfies. This treats the cause right? and not just the symptom. Yeah. So hormones do most of it. And they stimulate these peptides for most people. And they stimulate them in the normal person Say you get better completely, and you're better for, if you start at four, uh, 50, you're better until you're 70, one, two, and then all of a sudden, that same testosterone or testosterone and estrogen is not doing the job it used to do. You don't feel quite as good. You're more tired. You have uh, you can't sleep. The things that were better with testosterone and estrogen just aren't as good as they were before. And we found that that's because life and contamination of our environment and stress and uh, many other factors start eating away at these peptides and we can't sustain them with just testosterone or just estrogen or, or uh, in the pellet form. We do a good job in the beginning, but sometimes as we get over 70, we need something else added to it. So we add. So we're starting to add peptides to it and it's for, working. For the older element mm-hmm. of your patient population. Right. Right. Okay. So that's that's beginning to be something we look for if somebody comes, it, they come in and they say, you know, I feel just really the good and I'm just, yeah. I just, uh, it's just not quite like I used to be or I, I'm not, I'm having to take a nap in the afternoon or I can't sleep at night or, mm-hmm. you know, they have specific complaints and we have specific uh, peptides for those complaints, which oh, is okay. nice. So. So I mean that's part of what we uh, we were learning at the at the conference was what peptide for what symptoms. So that's one case scenario. The other case scenario is people with head injuries or people who have had lots of trauma in their life, um, or lots of psychiatric illnesses that they inherited. 
they may not respond completely to testosterone and estrogen or testosterone alone. And we have to look for something else early on because they've had some neurologic damage at some point. So those folks require both the hormones because that does some of the um, uh, anti-aging and bringing them back to normal. And then we have to add something else, and that's where the peptides fit in for them. So that, that's for the 10% of the people that don't get completely better with the pellets. So, so what's the best way to, to get my mind around understanding what peptides would be used for? Is it to go through a list of things that you know that it treats, or is it to talk about, like you mentioned, uh, what causes your body to, to break down in its production of its natural mm -hmm. peptides, like toxins mm -hmm. in the environment mm -hmm. uh, or environmental toxins, autoimmune diseases, cancer, severe levels of stress. Mm -hmm. Those are all things that your body internally gets jammed up. Right. So, so if you have those illnesses or you have, you've had a head injury, you have um, an imbalance. And that imbalance is, they find, is secondary to the lack of peptides that, that actually get worse and worse and worse as these diseases progress. So, so one of the things you have on this list that, that you put together is uh, genetic-related issues, such as specific genes that have been identified with Alzheimer's. Right, APOE, APOE 3 and 4. So are you suggesting then, or do we know yet, if, if there are peptides that, if, you're, if you have those genes and you're susceptible to the risk of Alzheimer's, mm -hmm. It can act as an, uh, an insulator or protection that you're less likely to get it? Yeah. That's, that was one of the, there's a peptide called BPC-157. That's one of the things that, that they, are, they are saying this does in the studies. That it, it help, if, you, if you are genetically predisposed to be one of those people that develops Alzheimer's, mm -hmm. that this can help prevent that or, or delay that. Prevent or delay. They right. are, you know, that the studies Obviously, haven't been they don't long have an enough answer yet. Right. to say it never happens. But uh -huh. but if you live long enough, you never know. Right. So hopefully yeah. we live long enough and we live well enough. So but. so specifically then for most people, I mean that's a sort of the list we've just talked about mm -hmm. is sort of a societal gambit. If we're talking about stress and toxins and mm -hmm. genetic things issues. that we can't do much about. Right. So, so that's th these are things that. Um, imbalance our bodies and decrease our peptides as we get older. All right. So because it gets complex for me, I... Uh, well, would, it is complex. It's, I mean, anytime I, I've got to go to I eight days of lecture, it's, it's You will take complex. the time to explain it to me. Because when we talk about hormones, over the last several years that we've been discussing them, there are a lot of specific things like osteoporosis or... Uh, uh, heart issues or uh, sugar-related diabetes issues, mm -hmm. specific things that hormones work to prevent or delay. Mm -hmm. And this looks like a similar it, list. It is. It is. And um, hormones are more global. Hormones have more receptor sites in, in different organ systems, and they, they're they like the big punch. Okay. Okay? So... Replacing your hormones helps you go back to the balance of when you were fertile or when women are fertile, but men are more fertile, <laughs> going back to like below 40. Yeah. Okay. So, so hormones affect every cell and, and have, there's receptor sites on, on most of the cells that they, that they activate in a big way. There's more receptor sites and they're more right. sensitive. So these are, they're not global. They don't. They don't take care of as many things. They're more local. They're specifically. They're targeted. specifically targeted into the. But to naturally the by your body, the balancing the system of so your body. So each one of them has a uh, a list of targets. And they're they're all made in your brain, or do no, we know they're made, they're made? No, they're made in the tissue. They're made in the tissues. So of your oftentimes body. they're made in the tissues of your body, not LH and FSH. Those are stimulatory uh, horm or hormones. Um, stimulators that are made in your hy hypothalamus so, and your pituitary. So then are the ones that work to combat uh, hunger, mm -hmm. uh, delay the digestive process mm -hmm. of food, that sort of thing? That works in both places. That works in your brain and it also works in your liver. 
and it works in your stomach in the motility. Okay. So it works in three different places, but it doesn't, but it's not as global as thyroid, which works in every cell. And so as I get older, my body loses or becomes inhibited in its ability to make those in a healthy form in the supply chain that I need. But not all of them. I mean, you, you aren't, it's, it's, you don't lose the ability to make all of them. You lose the ability to make the peptide the that tuners. allows you to absorb B12, or you lose the ability to, I mean, it has a genetic basis that we don't really have a good handle on, but it also has a stress basis. So, so if I take vitamin B12, there's a peptide that should tell my body, okay, this is coming, intrinsic digest Intrinsic factor. It. Intrinsic factor allows you to absorb it. Okay. If you don't have that, and that's a peptide. And so then if I don't have that, and I don't have you a peptide to replace it, you can't absorb B12 in your stomach. Taking it's just a waste of money. Right, you have to have a shot. Wow. So, I mean, there's, there's so many of these more local. That's local to the stomach. Okay. So, so, so what was the one you mentioned, the BPC? The body? That BPC-157. 157. And that, that is the one that I thought was the most global mm -hmm. of any of them. It helped prevent Alzheimer's. It helped with bone and joint replacement. I mean, replacement, excuse me. Bone, uh, healing from bo bone and joint from injuries. replacement and injuries. Yeah. Ligaments. You know, using it to, you take it orally, but that's one of the only oral ones, but it helps ligaments repair well because as you get older, one of the things you'll notice is that you don't repair everything as well if you don't have your hormones and if you don't have this. You're, I mean, testosterone helps you heal, but at some point it doesn't help you heal as well as when you were 35. So, so do you need so to you be need on this. these like... In advance, if, if you're going to go skiing, should you take these for a month ahead of time, or is it? I would say only if, if you, you were going to go have open heart surgery, you could take them. Okay. Or if you were going to go have a um, a um, joint replacement, and I'll I, I'll confess, I gave my husband that for his first knee, and I mean, his doctor goes, "Don't tell anybody how well you re you know you recovered because this isn't typical." The second time, I got real cocky and didn't do it. Mm. And then, so you have a, an at-home study. That yeah, I have an at-home study, and it was terrible. It was hard. For, it took him forever to recover. Yeah. You know, and I wish I would have done that. Right. Beforehand, in advance, in right. advance to get him ready for the healing. So process. if it's a planned event, you may want to incorporate that in your planning. Right now, but, not all of these are necessary your whole life. Right. The, I would say maybe if you had the APOE. Four four, the ApoE three four. Then maybe you should take it your whole life to prevent the Alzheimer right. Alzheimer's disease. Right. But or if you had a strong history of uh, Parkinson's disease, or there there are pe people who live in fear of getting these things, and it's better to be on something that helps you delay it. Testosterone delays it at a certain point, but you also need to have some of these other things to help delay it. But there there are healing. There are healing peptides. There are things for everything. I have one person that I, I can't wait to start on the sleep peptide. There's a, I, I can't recall the number, but it's the peptide for all sleep. Numbers. They don't have tricky little names that you no, can they remember. Have, yeah. So the, for sleep, because everything ev testosterone fixed every or everything else, Yeah. but his sleep's still bad. Right. You know, so and and one of the things that and we've that probably wasn't just a testosterone as, as issue. We've gone to it these different something. conventions. That they mm -hmm. they've got especially as you get older, you really benefit health wise from a good night's sleep. Mm -hmm. So you got, have to clean out all the crap that's in your brain that, that <laughs> all these yeah. things produce all day. Yeah, that's I mean, where it's the trash collector a comes drain in. <laughs> that comes out when you sleep, and if yeah. you're not sleeping, that's not happening. Mm -hmm. So so basically, I would say that peptides are. Usually a short term, a short term um, kind of treatment, mm -hmm. and when you're better, you may not need to stay on it. But some people may choose to stay on it. It's usually for a symptom, a specific symptom that somebody is is uh, experiencing autoimmune diseases. That's usually better on testosterone. But if it's not, there are peptides that actually balance the immune system so it doesn't get hyperactive and it doesn't attack our own tissues, which is amazing. And that that is that's something that we have been looking for for a long time. Right. Probably will be the next treatment for autoimmune disease. So are there other specific targeted peptides that you are starting to use and, and treatments for what? Um, we use we use Sermorelin for just general when people feel like their testosterone's getting kind of 
not quite getting them enough energy or their skin starting to sag, but it's not specific. So it's kind of a general overall, I feel better, I am I have more energy, I can, my muscles are still growing, I you know, I'm stronger, that kind of thing, as we age. Mm-hmm. So Samorlin's usually my first my first um, go to medication, yeah. but there's there are um, it, I'm going to say it wrong. Impamorlin, which is more of a uh, pre growth hormone. It's not growth hormone, but it stimulates growth hormone, just like Sermorlin does. And so b- they both work of together. those tell your body they're peptide chains mm-hmm. that tell you whether they're, they're like on off switches. Mm-hmm. You get in your body, and they say, "Hey, make some growth hormone." Right. But, but it's not because growth hormone is so highly regulated by the government and they're very cautious about any outside growth hormone that you're delivered. But what doctors have discovered is that there are things that they call secretagogues, that mm-hmm. are types of peptides, peptides. that operate as a, a switch to tell your body, which somehow has fallen asleep at the switch, yeah, to make its turn own it back on hormone. and make some growth hormone. And head injuries are the most common. That, yeah. that head injuries and aging are the two most common reasons that that can happen. But secretagogues have the advantage. I don't. I wouldn't give growth hormone. Growth right. hormone itself can cause you to have diabetes. Can, it's abused a lot and, too. And it's abused a lot. And it can also uh, cause you to have acromegaly if you get too much of a dose, you can, which means you, you kind of look like the Neanderthal, too much, too much forehead, too much jaw. And um, that's, not, that's not what we're going for. We're just going for healthy. So, But growth hormone basically doesn't have an off switch. If you take it, then either it's just going to overproduce or it's going to overreact uh, and give you all of the bad Parts of growth hormone. So that's why the FDA says you only use it for symptom relief. And when the symptoms are gone, then you don't use it. Right. That's right. Yeah. So, but we don't use that because we have secretagogues, which all that does is stimulate your own production of um, not the overproduction of growth hormone. And it still has the checks and balances that you always had before. Right. So if for some reason you're stimulating it, you get too much, then the opposing hormone then shuts it down. So you can't overdose on it. In so it's words, very if, nice and if it's not... there's a deficit and they say in the cells, and they say, here, fill this up. When it gets full, there's a, there's a regulator in the cell mm-hmm. that says, okay, we're full now, stop. Mm-hmm. It's a feedback system in, yeah. into your brain. It's all about the balance. Yeah, and it's all, it is all about balance. But secretagogues are safe and growth hormone isn't. So, right. I mean, I think that's a no-brainer. Yeah. So that's one of the things that, that we use... Now, but we're looking at these other different types of um, of peptides that have specific symptoms that they treat. That treat specific deficits that you experience as you age, and because you're an anti aging mm-hmm. practice, and you know that as we get older, our body stops having the the clarity and the acuity for producing these things. Mm-hmm. Just we kind of run out. And now you're learning what to do to help us recover that ability mm-hmm. so that we stay healthy. Stay longer. healthy as you as yeah. you get older and still can walk and don't have osteoporosis and things like that. Hormones do most of that, but we still need a little a little push with some of us need a push with the um, with the peptides. One of the things that you have to think about with peptides is the whole body is in a balance of ma- of making cells and making bone and making muscle and breaking it down. So when we're young, our cells are making as much as we're breaking down, and so it stays at a steady state. But then as we get old and lose testosterone and then we lose growth hormone and, and we lose our peptides, uh, we become more of a breaking down than a building up. So what happens is we look... People look gaunt. They look old. They look. They lean over. They're. They shrink. Yeah. Their uh, bones are thin. Their muscles are gone. They replace it with fat. They just have that old look, but they feel worse than they look. Yeah. And so, so basically, that's that's kind of they look, the, they look bad and feel worse. Right. Aging yeah. is really about just breaking your tissues down and not replacing them. Yeah. So that's what we're trying to combat, so that we can all be independent and live on our own and not have somebody taking care of us. So you're probably going to start seeing in the media over the next months and years more and more references to peptides and the appropriate use of peptides. 
And we wanted to talk about this this week and last week because we wanted you to know that Dr. Moffin's office is already doing the research to be available with what you need when you need it. So thank you for listening. Come back again. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.